Hello Year 7, uh, this is your first lesson of the new year, so welcome back. Um, you can do the entire lesson using just the video if you want to, or if you prefer, there is a PowerPoint presentation and a PDF file on Go for Schools as well. You will not be able to click on video links through this video, so any videos that you need to watch for your lesson have also been put on Go for School, so you may need to access them that way. Okay. Once you've uh, started the video, you can just pause it at any time as you complete tasks in your book. So again, Happy New Year, everyone. It's a shame I can't see you in person. Um, and that we're having to do lessons in this way, but we will manage and I look forward to seeing you again soon in the classroom. So today we are starting a new unit of work and it's all about extreme environments and we'll probably be doing this maybe for four or five weeks. And we're going to be looking at the locations of different types of environment. So things like where do we find deserts? Where do we find icy landscapes? Where do we find tropical rainforests? And those are the three environments that we are going to be looking at in particular detail. So to get ready for our lesson, you need to go and find a pen, a pencil and your geography book. If you have them, coloured pens or pencils would also be useful today. So pause the video, go and find those things and then come back and get ready for your lesson. So your first task, I'd like you to just take a look at these three images on the screen. What do they have in common? What do you think? What, what do you think about the climate? So the climate is the weather. What's the weather like in these places? Are they hot? Are they dry? Are they wet or cold or rainy? Do they look like they'd be nice places to live? Do you think you would enjoy living in these places? So stop the video. Have a really good look at these pictures. What can you work out about these locations? They are all extreme environments. And we're going to be looking at what a definition for that might be. So in today's lesson, you're going to describe the characteristics of an extreme environment. And a characteristic is just something that makes it what it is. So what things are there that make an environment extreme? We're also going to be looking at connecting those extreme environments with their locations and their climates. And towards the end of the lesson, we're going to write a definition for extreme environments. So what exactly is an extreme environment. So on to our first task of the day. You need to open up your book at the front, write in today's date and our new title, What is an Extreme Environment? And it would be fantastic if you could do this on a nice blank new page because this is the start of a new unit. So today's date and the title, what is an extreme environment? Now watch the spelling of that word. It's a tricky one. There's an N right in the middle. And we say environment. It's a spelling that lots of people get wrong. So make sure that you spell it properly. And don't forget to underline your date and your title with a ruler. Now I would like you to lay out your book in a very particular way for today's lesson. And on the next slide, there's an example of what I want it to look like. OK, so you can use a double page for your work. I think that would be a really good idea. And it will give you lots of space to write down all of your ideas. So you're going to be creating a mind map and you're going to need lots of space. OK, well, go on to the next slide now so that you can see what I need you to do. So this is the start of a mind map. So right in the middle, we have our topic, which is extreme environments. And coming off of that cloud in the middle, I've got three 
further circle. So I've got hot, cold and wet. So those are our three extreme environments. And then on each environment, we're going to be finding out examples. So where are they? Where would we find hot environment? We're going to be looking at the landscape. So that just means what does the land look like? Is it rocky? Are there mountains? Is it green? Is it sandy? Is it icy? We're going to be looking at the animals of that particular environment and also the climate. And I mentioned earlier that climate is weather and really it's weather over a long period of time, usually about 30 years. So I'd like you to pause the video now and set your book up like this. So remember, do it over a double page. You want to use two whole pages. You want extreme environments in the middle of those pages. And you want to have the hot, cold and wet coming off that middle section, but leave yourself lots of space to write information about each of those environments. Now, you don't necessarily need to write each of the boxes. So example, landscape, animals, climate, you don't need the boxes. We might do those in turn as we come to them, but you just need to have something that looks a little bit like this. OK, so pause the video and start creating this across a double page in your book now. So the next three slides all have pictures of different environments. The first one is cold, the second one is hot, the third one is wet. So some key words that you might find useful for today's lesson are climate. Now I've already mentioned this several times. And it's the weather over a long period of time. So what's the weather like? The landscape is what does it look like in this environment? What does the land look like? And a characteristic, which is a feature or quality that helps us to identify something. So your task now, you're going to look really carefully at the pictures on the next three slides. What can you tell about each of the environments? I'd like you to start putting some information into your mind map. So, for example, can you say what the climate is like? Is it dry or cold or hot or wet? Is the landscape rocky or flat? Are there mountains, rivers, valleys? I'll go through the pictures with you one by one, and you're going to put that information onto your maps. So our first environment is cold, cold environment. So what do you think the climate is like here? What words would you use to describe the weather, the climate? And how would you describe the landscape? Pause the video, look at each of these three pictures, and then put that information onto your mind map under the cold environment section. Come back once you've finished, pause the video and then come back when you've finished. So our next environment is hot environment. You're going to do exactly the same thing again. So what's the climate like? What's the weather like? I can see some clouds. I see a few clouds. I can see that it's very dry because there's not a lot of vegetation. That means plants. So there aren't many plants and the plants that are there are quite far apart. So that tells me there's probably not a lot of rain, probably doesn't rain very often. And what's the landscape like? We've got some very different landscapes there. In Bryce Canyon, it's very rocky, but in the Namib Desert, it's very sandy looking. All three pictures have some plants in them. Do you know what any of them are? If so, write them onto your mind map. So pause the video and try and put some of that information into your mind map. So examples of the location. So we've got three different locations there. What's the climate like? What's the landscape like? What are the plants like? Pause the video, fill in your book and come back when you're finished. So our next one is a wet environment. You can do exactly the same thing again. What's it like? Pause the video, fill in your book and come back when you're finished. 
You're now going to watch some videos about extreme environments and I would like you to use them to put some extra information into your mind maps. They're not particularly long videos. Um, as I mentioned on the first slide, you won't be able to click on the link here in the video, but I will put these links into Go for Schools. You will find them there. Okay. Try and update your mind map as you're watching these videos. Pause, pause this video now and then go and watch these videos and come back when you're finished. Hopefully your mind map is starting to look quite full now. I've put an example on the next slide of the sort of thing I would expect to see on your mind map. So move on to the next slide. Now, you should start to see something like this. So pause the video and check your mind map against this one. Add in anything that you've missed. Come back when you've finished. So what makes an environment extreme? Have you been able to identify anything that would help you write a definition for extreme environments? Just take a moment or two to think about these questions. You don't need to write anything in your book at the moment, but just have a think about it. What makes an environment extreme? What characteristics does it have? And are these characteristics only found in extreme environments? Have a look at the table below for some ideas. So for climate, for an environment to be extreme, does there have to be wind, precipitation? Now, we know that precipitation can mean rain or snow or sleet or hail, so pretty much stuff that falls from the sky. Okay. And what's the temperature like? What do you think? For location, remember when we did our lesson on contour lines? We looked at how high the land goes and we also looked at lines of latitude. So does this affect an environment? Does the altitude or the height of an environment make it extreme? What about people and animals? Are there resources in extreme environments? Are they developed? Pause the video and just have a think for one minute and then come back. Okay, so you've had a look at quite a lot of photos and some videos, and I'm hoping that you've formed an idea of what an extreme environment might be. So your next task is to look at the world map on the following slide and try to answer these questions. You don't need to do it in your book. You can just do it in your head. That's fine. Can you identify any of the places that you've got on your mind map? So do you know where the North Pole is, the South Pole? the Amazon rainforest or Daintree rainforest. Can you find any deserts? So move on to the next slide now and have a look at the map. So just spend a few moments having a look at this map. Alternatively, you could do a Google search. Um, the, the maps on there are fantastic quality and you can zoom right in and have a look and, and see what those locations are like. It's probably time well spent doing that. So if you'd like to pause the video here, you can either use this map or you could have a look on Google Maps to try and find some of those locations that you have on your mind map. So what is an extreme environment? Based on what you've learned today, Try and write a definition for the term extreme environment in your book. You don't need to write any more than two sentences. That will be plenty. If you're struggling to get started, you can start your first sentence with an extreme environment is. Pause the video, write your two sentences and then come back. So how did you do? Check your answer against my example below and then copy that whole example into your book. So an extreme environment is a place which exhibits extreme conditions that are challenging to most life forms. These may be extremely high or low ranges of temperature, air, water and height. Pause the video and copy this into your book. 
homework time. On the next slide, there is a list of keywords and their definitions. When we're next in the classroom, I am going to give you a spelling test and you need to be able to spell these particular words on the next slide. OK, so I'm going to go to that slide now. Here are our keywords. We've got extreme environment, precipitation, temperature, climate, desert, poles, rainforest, adaptation, equator, indigenous, deforestation and sustainable. It would be fantastic if you could actually practice saying some of those words out loud because some of them will be new to you. You won't have come across them before. So rewind this video and say them along with me. Just practice saying them and you need to learn how to spell all of those keywords because for our spelling test I'm going to read out a definition and you're going to write down the key word that matches that definition and you have to get the spelling correct. If you have any questions during your lesson, um, contact me on email or on Teams. Right, goodbye.